Welcome back to The O Show, everything crypto every day. I am your host with the most, Wendy O. And I don't know about you guys, but I am so excited for 2022. I don't exactly know why. I don't have a reason, a rhyme for it, but I just know I'm really excited for it. Maybe because we're starting to see some amazing things come out of the cryptocurrency space with regulation, with NFTs, with play to earn, just all of this different types of stuff. But on today's show, we're really gonna focus on what the heck is going on with Bitcoin, what's going on with Ethereum, and specific things you should be looking for in the market before making any rash decisions. Let's get into it. Oh no, Ethereum wells dumping ETH as price slides below 4K data shows. Don't worry, we're gonna go ahead and cover the Ethereum chart because it is aligning up with exactly what we talked about on the Sunday night live stream, well, Sunday morning. So let's go ahead and go through some of the key important aspects of this story. So blockchain data analytics service Glassman revealed that the number of Ethereum addresses holding at least 1,000 Ethereum dropped to 6,292 this Monday, the lowest reading since April 2017 at its year to date peak numbers were 7,239 in January also down over here. But as the numbers of these so-called wells drop, it reflects an ongoing selling trend amongst the richest Ethereum wallet owners. For instance, the number of Ethereum addresses that hold at least 10,000 ETH or around 39.2 million also plunge from 1,208 in June to 1,156 at the time of this writing, making it almost a 4.5% decline. So let's go ahead and talk about this. We're talking about January 2017 and we're talking about 2000. 21. So it's completely different ball game here, completely different market and globally and politically. So back in 2017, people just used Ethereum for trading for the most part because gas fees weren't super high. There wasn't a whole lot going on with the Ethereum ecosystem. But now we have NFTs, we have metaverse, we have play to earn. We have all these really robust ecosystems and DeFi. So it doesn't, this article doesn't exactly say what they're selling the money into, if they're selling it into USD, if they're selling it to buy NFTs, um, if they're cashing out, we don't really know. So me personally, I don't necessarily I think this is bearish. I'm not pressed about it. It's not bothering me. Some people may say this is a bearish signal. It's time to sell, but realistically, it's hard to compare 2017 to 2021 because the market is completely different. But let's go ahead and focus on Ethereum price right now and what you should look at. Here is our Ethereum chart. Am I bearish on Ethereum long term? Nope. Am I bearish on Ethereum short term? Yes. We're in a downtrend. So we talked about this Ethereum chart probably on a Sunday night live stream. I'm not exactly sure what the day was. I probably should mark these days. But anyways, we are in a downtrend. And yes, we did pop up above this um, trend line acting as resistance. We kissed about 4,800, but we fell back below. And then we also did the same thing on December 8th. We tried to kiss approximately 45,000, excuse me, $4,500, but we dropped below. And then over here, we're seeing our EMAs act as a tangle, act as very, very hard resistance at about $4,100. We failed and we are dropping down below. And now we're actually below the EMA 100. Personally to me, because these are some key important areas, um, 4,100, um, $4,000, it's looking like we could possibly retest 37 to 35. And that is kind of where the EMA 200 lies. Also too, we have a really great area of support here at $3,300. So these are going to be the areas that I am watching. I'm not interested in taking out an Ethereum position. I'm more concerned about altcoins because there's a lot more gains to be made there, but our indicators are also immensely bullish on the daily chart. Me personally, for me to be bullish on Ethereum short term, I need to see at least a flip of $4,000. Right now it doesn't look likely, but I would wait till the end of the day and kind of watch what happens this week. Also too, it is the holiday, so maybe there's some less trading, market activity going on because people are with their families. I don't know exactly, but I do know what I see on the chart and it's not looking too terribly great, but, I do think that quarter one of 2022 will do well with crypto, just as long as Miss B behaves herself. We talk about following the money all the time on this show, and this story makes me immensely bullish on Bitcoin, but I was already immensely bullish on Bitcoin long-term. So Mexican billionaire says, buy Bitcoin in New Year message. Life advice from Mexico's third richest person, don't be jealous, believe in yourself and buy Bitcoin. I absolutely love this, and the reason why I love this is because this is so, it just, it just it just makes sense. It clicks with me. It resonates with me. I love the confidence. I love the fact that this person is literally telling people, don't be jealous, 
believe in yourself. Like literally God helps those who help themselves. And the fact that he's putting it out there, I'm here for it. And I like the little message of opt out by Bitcoin. And I think that he is a hundred percent correct because we all know that fiat currencies are becoming very devalued with inflation and all of the insanity going on in the global markets. But let's go ahead and take a look at Miss B and see what she's doing. This is our Bitcoin chart and oh my, we were not able to break above $51, $52,000. That's okay. I do see an issue because we are below the ribbons here, utilizing market cipher, and we're starting to break below this trend line at about $48,000. Market cipher is looking a little bit bearish here. We're falling downwards. This again, this is the six hour chart. Me personally, it's looking like we are gonna get back down to this range at about $45,000. However, I don't really care about this small price action. I'm not scalping this, I'm not really trading this. There's too much risk for me. I wanna focus on altcoins. And the reason why we're using Bitcoin as a signal for altcoins is because if we break up above 5253, we're gonna see a lot of great price action. But if we do break below 45, we're gonna see a lot of fear in the market. So that's why we're utilizing key areas here. Taking a look at the 12 hour chart. 12 hour chart is also looking very bottomed out, or excuse me, not bottomed out, but it looks like we were very, very much extended into overbought and we're heading downwards. This is bearish, it's not looking too terribly great. So I'm gonna be watching this, see what happens with our trend line here and see if we actually break and close below support. And if we do, we can probably look to this area about 45.6, and that's gonna be a crucial area for us to watch. One piece of advice I do wanna give you guys, you can do whatever it is you want to do, but it is a holiday season. I highly recommend if you don't have to take a trade and you're not feeling it, don't do it. Sometimes no action is better than taking an action to where you get wrecked. This next story here really isn't a story. It's more like a critical thinking activity. So my good friend, M, who's been on the show before with my Trader Talk series, tweeted this. Based on 2020 data, the average annual cost for federal inmate in a federal facility in the United States in 2020 was $39,158. That is approximately $120.59 per day. I don't really wanna have this conversation right now. This is something that I'm very passionate about when we're talking about prison reform and just some of the crazy things that the federal government spends their money on. But think about this for a little bit. The fact that we are spending this much money to house criminals, which that were can be debatable, is kind of wild. There's some people that don't even make $100 per day in the United States. All I want to do with this piece of information is have you guys think, have you think about what our government is spending their money on and their priorities. I don't have the data for how much they spend on public education per child per day, but I want to go ahead and figure that out and present it to you guys because this amount sounds a little bit interesting. Either way, I want you guys to comment your thoughts below on what you think about this because I think that we're being very irresponsible in our spending in the United States, which is why I'm so bullish on Bitcoin. Friendly reminder, Gary Gensler is not your friend and he is not the person of the year. Gary Gensler is a wolf in sheep's clothing. I do not trust him one bit. However, I do think it is very, very important to continue to write to your local government officials, be involved in community centers and write to the SEC and let them know we don't need your protection. This next segment is sponsored by Transient. We went ahead and did a review on them, I wanna say last week. But the cool thing about them is, is they are next gen contracts. And this also means smart contracts for everybody. I'm not sure if you guys are aware what smart contracts do, but smart contracts basically automate a lot of things with Ethereum. So for example, if you're an artist and you create a particular piece of artwork and you sell it on the open market, somebody buys it, you can have smart contracts set up to where you receive royalties for the rest of your life or how over long you want, which I think is absolutely amazing. But let's go ahead and talk about some key things with the Transient Project. So on December 27th, they kicked off the 10 days of Transient campaign. So during those 10 days, there will be live promos to increase earnings, influencer live pools, and key partnerships announced and much, much more. So this happened on the 27th and they're gonna be announcing huge partnerships for the Crypto Pool and Esports DAP, which I think is absolutely amazing. We all know esports are going to be big in the space, but there's gonna be more here. 
Let's go ahead and expand a little bit more what the transient crypto pools are. So basically they focus on the ability for users to create their own pools for crypto price predictions. So for example, you are hundred percent sure that Bitcoin is going to nuke to $45,000. You can go ahead and create a pool regarding that. Or do you think that transient coin is going to hit price X by Valentine's day? You can go ahead and create a pool for that and kind of battle with people all across the transit ecosystem. I personally like these types of prediction models. I think they're a lot of fun and who likes to win additional income if your prediction is right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe and set alerts. I will have some media for you dropping later on. Bye-bye.